And welcome to the program. Your host, Ron Whitlock, with Senator Eddie Lucio, Jr., District 27. Senator, thank you for hosting us here on the telecast. Now, the legislative session has begun in Austin, and that means the good news is the legislature is in session. The bad news is the legislature is in session. It's a, it's a two-edged sword whenever the legislature is meeting in Austin. Is that not correct? You don't have to answer that question if you don't want to. Now, the senator that we're interviewing here today for your observation is, in fact, a border senator because he represents from Brownsville, Cameron County, up to uh, McAllen in Hidalgo County. And then north, he's a coastal bend and coastal area senator for the state of Texas. So he represents fishing interest and ranching interest, farming interest, and then international commerce here along the border region. And so that gives you pretty well a, a view of everything. Your constituents represent all areas of the state economy. Is that correct? That's right, Ron. Uh, first of Pretty all, happy, happy, happy New Year to everyone um, uh, in the Valley and uh, to you and your family. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm one of those very fortunate um, senators that represents, first of all, a beautiful area of the state and one that's unique, uh, one where the border and, and the coast, coastal area of Texas come together. No other senator can uh, has that. I, I do. and But with that comes a lot of responsibility in terms of issues, uh, issues dealing with agriculture, water, uh, the environment, um, and, and of course the economy and, and a growing population that, that obviously needs uh, us to address education and health care. So there are many issues on the table. Well, Lloyd Neal, the uh, county judge in Oasis County, you go all the way to Oasis County and Corpus Christi through Kingsville and South and so forth. He says that Corpus Christi is a border community and it needs to anticipate and feel that it is a border community. If you're viewing us on Fox 38 in Corpus Christi or KTOV, you know that Lloyd Neal says it's a not only a coastal bend area, but it is a county that in fact needs to consider itself part of the border. So. We're going to talk about all those things. In particular, we're going to visit about a little bit about the last two programs you and I did together. Uh, one, in fact, when you encouraged us to focus on water security because we have water being contaminated, not only intentionally, but maybe unintentionally. That means it could be a terrorism item and so forth. So you've encouraged us to do that, and we're continuing to do that. The Oasis uh, River, obviously, is a surface water, uh, almost sole source for Corpus Christi. Uh, additionally, the Rio Grande River is still a source and is open. Uh, the Mary Rose Pipeline provides somewhat of secure water coming out of um, Atascosa right. and so forth into Corpus Christi. So they have a little bit of secure water coming in, but the valley region is somewhat more of an issue as it relates to security. Texas Windstorm Insurance, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to have also Todd Hunter on the program, so stay tuned. Additionally, Senator Garcia is going to be with us on the telecast also. First thing I want to talk about is your Texas Good Neighbor Commission. You've been really, really excited and touting trying to recreate the Texas um, Good Neighbor Commission. Why is that such an important thing, in your opinion, for this session that you want to get accomplished? Well, the Bible tells us to be good neighbors. Be a good neighbor, not only to the people that live right next door to us, uh, but the people in our community, the, the people in our state and our country, but it also means to be a good neighbor for people that live just across the, the international border. Uh, they're our neighbors. And um, I think it would behoove, behoove us uh, to reestablish that office who, that worked very nicely in the old days. Um, I remember meeting Lauro, Lauro Cruz, who was the executive director of the Good Neighbor Commission. I remember Lauro speaking to me about uh, the role that the Good Neighbor Commission had. Unfortunately, it was one of the agencies that was shut down, uh, I believe, probably in the 19, late 1980s, if, I'm, if I recollect correctly. But I, th I think it's important for us, uh, based on the immigration issues, uh, economic issues, uh, water issues, because we both depend on the Rio Grande River. There are many issues that I think that we need to collaborate on. Energy reform. And, 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 and be able to communicate with, with our neighbors on. So I, I, think, I, th I think this would be a perfect time to do it. It's, it's a new... A new era uh, in, in, in state government. We have a new governor, a new lieutenant governor. Uh, we have uh, the continuation uh, of a speaker that I believe in and uh, I respect, 
uh, a gentleman from San Antonio that understands uh, South Texas and the border. Uh, and, and, you know, this, this would be, I think, a good step uh, in the right direction, a giant step uh, as we prepare to expand, you know, economic development, especially in international trade with Mexico. But there are other issues that are coming into play in today's world, and we need to be prepared for those. Now, Senator, you've been working real closely with Carlos Rubenstein, who's the chair and head of the Texas Water Development Board. Why is water development issues, uh, infrastructure, going to be such a key and critical area that you're going to be focusing on this session of the legislature? Well, Ron, let me tell you, that's such a broad issue. Uh, obviously, the population is exploding. Uh, one hospital, one hospital in the Rio Grande Valley uh, is telling us that they, uh, they're delivering 1,000 babies a month. Now, if that's the case, that'd be 12,000 babies a year, which means if you build elementary schools six years down the road, you'll have to build 12 elementary schools, one each month, for, the, for those that are being born right now. And then in the, in the course of, of a 10-year period, it's 120 elementary schools. Now, you need water to operate those schools. You need water to operate hospitals, businesses. You need water to operate your residential homes. Water is is probably the number one life issue there is. Uh, li water is life. Um, we have we have a Rio Grande River that we depend on. Yeah, on and the surface waste water. Or persistent in the waste is coming in the minimum. And we are now uh, obviously all looking at after a study that I, I was involved with uh, on the salination of water, we're looking at many, many projects going, going up throughout the state of Texas, but that's gonna require a private-public partnership to be established to be able to have the funds necessary to build those, that infrastructure to create good drinking water, usable water, portable water, from brackish and seawater. So I love that topic. Yeah. Let's go to the let's go to the to the uh, video. We have a video of you talking to Todd Hunter on this particular issue. Uh, we're going to play that now, where you and he both are talking about Dr. Stephen Lyons testifying that the water needs of the state of Texas are skyrocketing. Here's that clip. The more people that come, the more use. In fact, Dr. Steve Lyons testified at some of the hearings, and what he indicated was his municipal water usage is going to skyrocket. So that means all our cities and our folks that live in the cities, the towns outside, it hurts agriculture, it hurts ranching, it hurts our municipal industrial use if you don't have it. So the more folks come in, water desalination is a source that makes sure they have water. So these municipal areas needing all the water that they need and so forth, there's also this is going to have somewhat of a competition with ag interest farmers and ranchers and so forth. So desal using brackish and seawater, that uses water that agriculture can't use at all. And so that's a very interesting thing if we can do some desal, and Todd Hunter just said he'd like to have desal in Corpus Christi in the Nueces uh, County area. The percentage-wise of 100% of, of water on, in the globe, 3% of that water is really good water, and 2% of that is used for agriculture. That leaves 1%, you know, for other uses, including drinking. Uh, yeah. and, and there's a, a, a minus 1%, uh, not a minus, but a fraction of that 1% that actually is for human consumption. The rest of it is for other purposes, washing dishes, washing clothes, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we, we really, that, that natural resource is, is, is oh my goodness, is, is of, of vital importance in our lives. So uh, we need to obviously practice uh, conservation. We need to try to uh, make good water out of brackish and seawater. It's costly and, and it's going to take uh, planning and praying and, and doing all the things that are necessary to be able to accomplish our goals. So, but I, I'm confident that, that we, we, uh, we have an aggressive legislature. Uh, the makeup of our new legislature is, is such where I think people want to um, make sure we, 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 we do what we, we, uh, we were sent there to do, and that um, to uh, be solution-oriented and find solutions to our issues. 
And the South Texas delegation for the Coastal Bend all the way over to Laredo, then south down to Brownsville, is vitally interested and they're aware of the fact that businesses, before they locate, they want to make sure that the community where they're going to locate and bring jobs and economic opportunity is going to have more than one source of water and you better have that water otherwise those companies are not going to come and we're going to ask this senator how you're going to take care of that particular need when this program continues, so stay tuned. Welcome to the program, your host Ron Woodlock with Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. for Texas District Number 27 from Nueces County, the Corpus Christi city limits all the way south to Brown, then to the north and west to the city of McAllen. We went to the break talking about the fact that water is very important because we've got to have air. If we don't have air for three months, we're going to be dead from water for about a week. Pretty important item. But also the companies that are wanting to relocate focus in South Texas and Coastal Bend area want to relocate, they want to make sure you got more than one water source. And so if we're looking at the Oasis surface water, Rio Grande River surface water, that's all we've got in some communities that's the case. That's not really a very good idea. You better have brackish, desal, and well water and groundwater and all those things working for you, right? That's correct. Uh, our, our one plant that is in full operation, well, I, I think it's operating um, at about 80%, I'm told, um, is, is obviously giving us uh, a few million gallons of water a day. Uh, and I don't have those exact numbers, but it's significant. It's it, uh, we just finished need. doing a study on desalination of salt water, which is going to be more expensive than desal of brackish water, uh, but it's doable. And of course, if, if we're able to find a way to cut the cost down, we got an abundance of salt water out there lying in the Gulf of Mexico that we can depend on for the future growth of this valley. Well, better get it done, too. So what is your intent to try and make sure that we get plenty of water for the South Texas region this session? Absolutely, and that's a focus that my son, Eddie Lucia III, is also uh, in, involved with. He, he uh, Eight years ago when he got elected to the House, I, 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 I gave him some advice. I said, son, try to do as much as you can to learn about water, water law, because that's the future of our, our, of our valley. And, and if you can become a little expert, which I think he, in my opinion, humble opinion, he has become, uh, then, then uh, you're going to be uh, highly sought after. I want to get back on the Natural Resources Committee. I've made my intentions known to S Senator Patrick, wow. or uh, Governor Patrick, now, and I would like very much. I served on that committee for 10 years. Uh, from 1991 to 2001, so I, I was involved in the first major water plant for the state of Texas. So I, I like that committee. I hope I can get back on. Our San Juan Independent School District has basically revolutionized what's happening in PSJ and showed the state and nation in particular. He's been to the White House twice in the last 60 days in particular, and the fact that more than 50% of the graduates of Parsons Town and Alamo graduate with some college credits on the time they get out. We talked to the vice chair of the Senate uh, Hispanic Caucus, uh, Senator Garcia of, uh, of Houston, who was born and raised in Duval County here in South Texas. And she said in particular that she, after listening to Dr. King speak at the Hispanic Caucus meeting recently, said that that needs to be the model for public ed funding this session of the legislature. Here's what she said. And I was really pleased to hear him say that over 50% of his graduates from high school leave high school with dual credits uh, in, their in the local community college. That's wonderful. And I think we need to pursue more uh, dual credit uh, classes. Uh, I really was also very encouraged to hear him talk about the uh, uh, learning centers that he's established for the parents. Uh, because we're finding that in, in the pre-K and early years, if the child is having difficulty with reading, you know, they're not going to be able to get the parental support at home if they can't read at the level that the child needs to be reading or they can't read in English. So I think his approach to, to not only uh, uh, focus on the children, but also assisting parents is, is one that needs to be uh, uh, followed throughout the state. And in talking to you after the fact, you also seem to agree, as did the chairman of that committee, uh, Senator Jose Rodriguez of El Paso, that PSA needs to be the model for public ed funding. How can that be brought in? What legislation needs to be filed to follow the public uh, policy change that effectively happened in PSA here in South Texas? 
we're blessed to, to have many wonderful superintendents, very hardworking superintendents. Um, Dr. King, Daniel King, uh, obviously is one that's highly re renowned at the state level. People know who he is and and uh, how hard he works to um, create a you know a a good healthy environment for the children or the kids and the, or the young people that go to the BHA. Uh, school district, and I'm very proud of his uh, achievements. I, I will work with him and others to make sure that we have the uh, the necessary legislation, uh, if necessary, to uh, put these models into into place. And to, uh, and and I, I think the TEA is going to play a significant role in the, in the whole process as well. So I look forward to to getting back to Austin um, um, to. Continue to work in the education committee. It's a committee that uh, I was appointed vice chairman of, and I, I, I like the committee a lot. There's a lot we can do there. Coupled with the finance committee, obviously, which I'm a member of as well, we can certainly get some things done for education. And my intention is to uh, make sure we listen attentively to superintendents like Dr. King, who are in the front lines on a daily basis. Uh, and, and know what we have to do to make it work for all our students. And, and I, I, I hope to God that uh, we can make sure that everyone gets a chance to succeed. One of the highest ranking Democrats in the state of Texas in Austin, and now in session in Austin, Texas, because the legislative session currently is ongoing. We'll be back with another segment with Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. in a moment. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to the program. Our guest on the program today, Texas Senator Eddie Lucio, Jr., District 27, goes all the way from Nueces County, the city limits of Corpus Christi, all the way down to Brownsville, then to the west and northwest of the city of McAllen. Senator, thank you for hosting us here on the program here today. Bus transportation is an important item, especially after you graduate. You have all these yellow buses carrying kids in, in public ed, but once you get into community college and uh, UTRGV in particular, you need bus transportation depending on your income and transportation needs to try to help you with that purpose. Any hope this time of helping um, get some additional funding from bus transportation, predominantly for Valley Metro, who needs to provide service now with UTRGV being put together. We also have community college in South Texas College, TSCC in Harlingen, TSB in Brownsville, and Del Mar College in uh, Corpus Christi and Laredo Community College. They need also help. Is there any way that the state can assist providing some additional funding for uh, those uh, public institutions like Valley Metro? You know, it's been a long time since we re truly addressed the, 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 the real needs of transportation for education at the public school level and, of course, at the college or, or in this case, Valley Metro, uh, public transportation that connects the valley uh, in education, uh, in health care, hospitals, clinics, um, work, uh, or, you know, the, the job market, etc. Uh, the workplace. So I, I think that we need to obviously uh, visit that and, and give it a serious look at what the true needs are out there that will create a better quality of life for everyone and, and not leave anyone out of the process. Yeah, it, it, it had been my intention since last, the end of last session to look at that particular issue as well, and I'm glad you bring it up. I thank you for for bringing it to the table uh, in, 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 in public forum, uh, we need to hear from the public. We need to know specifics uh, about how they feel it will impact them and their lives uh, in the areas I just mentioned or others that uh, we, we might not be aware of. So uh, yes, uh, it is my full intention to to uh, voice the concerns and the needs of uh, of the valley when it when it in South Texas when it comes to public education uh, and and uh, and education at a higher level. The council of government statewide has got a bill that's going to be coming out this session, and they're trying to get a situation where these governmental entities could actually create a 911 district controlled by a local board, locally appointed board that would control 911. In particular, right now the valley is losing about 1.3 million dollars of the fact that you and I have a deduction of every month on our cell phone bill. Well, 1.3 million of that is not going to our district, it's going to Austin, and we're not getting it back. 
So there might be some way that uh, you might be able to be of assistance to increase funding for the region. Uh, the ultimate objective would be like Corpus Christi, San Antonio, Fort Worth and Dallas, Houston, and the Valley can actually segment itself out and create a, valley, a district where uh, that the 911 could be handled by, by a real dispatcher with EMT certification. One of the problems that I've noticed by watching uh, national news, you've got these people taking 911 calls and they get into an argument with a caller because they're low income, they're minimum wage and so forth. So the valley and the metros in the state really needs to have a professional group of people. So if we could, you know, if we can, if we can have some help on that particular bill. Absolutely. I think all the stakeholders will, will be in Austin uh, discussing that particular issue. 911 is a, a major issue <laughs> that, that uh, affords us an opportunity to help people in need uh, and in distress. Uh, or an emergency uh, for emergency purposes, so it's a, a very important issue. It's, it's it's one of life and death, uh, and one that requires um, um, a, a a well defined approach. So I, I certainly uh, look forward to making sure that we approach it correctly. What's amazing to me is the fact that now that everyone has cell phones and only 15 percent of us have a landline phone in our house. The whole 911 system was set up on you pick up the phone as your home or business, and, and, the, and the dispatch knows exactly where you are. 85% of those calls are made by cell, so that doesn't work anymore. That's so right. it's, it's in transition. The whole thing is in transition. And so all the help we can give all of us in the whole state would be very important in this session. Well, there's technology that will be developed, I'm sure, that we haven't even think, uh, thought of at this point. Uh, and it surprises me every time, you know, that, that I go to Senator, upgrade a computer or something or what is available out there. Within years, we go from landline to 85% sale. Now it's going to, to everybody on their computer using, right. using Magic Jack. And that's an entire new can of worms and so it's, right. it's an evolving technological mess but there might be uh, a button we can just just push you know in a home that will signal ex exactly uh, where the emergency I is and and that button obviously is for specific purposes uh, that could be set up or a series of buttons I don't know Ron I, all I know is that someone will be able to come up with the right system that will be life-saving. We'll be back in a moment with a wrap-up, so stay tuned. At the beginning of the program, we promised you Chairman Todd Hunter from Corpus Christi talking about Texas Windstorm Insurance, and here's what he says needs to be done this session of the Texas Legislature. Right now we're working on a funding formula. Hopefully the various groups come up with a funding formula for the next session, which Senator Lucy and I will work together. We always have on windstorms, so that's the first. Second, I'll tell you what I'm very bothered about, and that's the agencies that oversee this. When an agency comes out and says only coastal counties are to have their automobile policies taxed, our farmers and ranchers to be taxed, and nobody else in the state senator has to pay it. I say it's time to change that state agency. You saw Chairman Todd Hunter say that the Texas Insurance Commission needs to be totally thrown out, needs to be just totally revamped because people are losing their homes because they can't pay their mortgage. And you said basically the same thing. What can be done about it? Do you think this is the session when that can be done? What has to happen, in my opinion, is that the state has to take up the issue as a statewide, an a statewide approach. It 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 can't put the entire uh, responsibility just on border count on on coastal counties. People, uh, it's too much to 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 of a burden. Um, it has to be a statewide approach. Uh, Eighty-five percent of the products that the people in this great state use come through the coast of Texas, all over, and they, they go to all areas of the state. The coast is a very important area, and we can't punish people who live on the coast and, and having to uh, foot the bill, for example, on the, on the Texas windstorm insurance. Uh, uh, obligations that, that, uh, that we have. We have to build strong homes. Uh, we have to build according to specifications and, and rules and regulations. But when it comes to insurance, I think the insurance should be 
addressed on a statewide basis. Uh, everyone should have to pay a little bit, a little bit more to be able to achieve the goals we need to be able to have windstorm insurance along the coast. Well, Senator, the, the increases have been egregious, doubling every two years, yeah. doubling, 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 doubling. From that, 300 a quarter to 700 a quarter to 1,000 a quarter, just unbelievable. And it's mandatory, and, and you know, this is something that we just cannot bear anymore. We need to, to have everyone, it's just like the, the money we collect a dollar or two from your insurance policy, automobile policy, to fight crime. We fight auto, uh, auto crime, you know. Uh, uh, it's an auto theft prevention authority that we, that was the first bill that I carried in, as a senator and back in 1991. It's the same approach that we need for TWIA. You have said to the Guardian recently that the legislature of this session needs to hear from the people in the Valley in South Texas, Corpus Christi and Laredo. Why do the legislative people meeting in Austin, the policymakers, need to hear from the people, these people watching our program? Well, uh, you know, the only way we can know what what the real face of Texas is, is it for us to hear from the people of Texas. Uh, people in my district, I have a uh, coffee shop, uh, you know, type hearings or, or meetings. Uh, uh, I have seminars. I have summits. I have all kinds of, of, of activities that afford people to come together and talk about the issues that are important to them. Um, and that's important, but many of our legislators don't do that. Um, I, I want people to send me an email, uh, a fax, uh, give us a call, and let us know specifically what is important for them. Senator, right. thank you very much for very hosting welcome. us here at your, pro at your uh, office. Thank you for joining us here on the program. Till next time, adios.